Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study of the Millennial Kingdom government with the beginning scripture reference of Revelation chapter 20 and verse 7. This is part of a series of studies looking at what the rest of scripture says about the future in the 1,000 year kingdom of Jesus Christ that is referred to and taught here in Revelation chapter 20. It's called the Millennial Reign or Millennial Kingdom of Christ. And we will spend the better part of this study looking at Revelation regarding the government during that time. And then we'll have a short question and answer period at the end of the study in part two. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verses, 21 and tw uh, verses 20 and 21, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal for where your treasure is there will your heart be also and then later in verse 33 of Matthew 6 he says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you and it is simply a fact that the worldly Christian thinks only on his condition and well-being during this temporary lifetime in the flesh. They're worried about a purpose-driven life. They're worried about the best life now. They're worried about naming it, claiming it, being blessed, being prosperous right now. But the truly spiritual Christian thinks on the things of this life in terms of eternity and whether the things that they are doing the way they are living and the priorities they have in daily life will result in pleasing God and reaping his reward in the eternal life to come. In other words, folks who do not care about the study of the Millennial Kingdom are carnal. They have no vision for eternity and they have no interest in the things that pertain to the Kingdom even though Luke described the last days Jesus spent on earth between the resurrection and ascension in Acts 1-3 saying to whom also he Jesus showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and listen speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God in quote Jesus spent his last forty days before ascending to heaven speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God he wasn't speaking about your best life now your purpose driven life or how to be prosperous and name and claim everything you want in this life and Paul's ministry is described at the end of the book of Acts in Acts chapter 28 verse 31 as preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Apostolic and New Testament Christianity is all about a literal, physical kingdom of God on earth, with Jesus Christ in his glorified state, sitting on the throne of David in Jerusalem and ruling the world for 1,000 years, the kingdom of heaven on earth, which culminates in the final judgment and the commencement of the eternal age. We have a message teaching the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And those kingdoms become one during this 1,000 year uh, millennial kingdom age. And at the end of that 1,000 years, Satan and the final rebellion is put down and we have the great white throne judgment and then the eternal age. And that's what apostolic New Testament Christianity is focused on. And we hope that you get as excited as we do about these things. And if you'd like to write to us, if you have questions about these things, please watch all the messages and don't ask questions we answer. But if you have additional things that come to mind or you have comments or prayer requests, you can send them by letter uh, and send it uh, to us using email by sending your letter to bbbfohio at yahoo.com or you can send your letter by U.S. Postal Mail to Bible Believers Fellowship P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. Again, the email address is 3Bs, BBBFOhio, at yahoo.com. Or you can send 
to the P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085, and we look forward to hearing from you. But now, let's begin part one of our two-part study titled, The Millennial Kingdom Government. And just before the study begins, we want to share a birth announcement from the Hoffman family and a salvation testimony from Brother Eric Molitor of Dayton, Ohio. Now, we also had a literal birthday yesterday. Late last night, little e now I don't know why they gave her three names, but there's three names. Eve Sophia Nida Hoffman. And so this is, let me turn the lights so I can see a little better. There you go. And that's Shaylin, mommy holding, oh, it looks a little fuzzy there. Baby, fresh out of the oven right there. Yeah. There's proud papa, Chad. And they did have to induce and take the baby about two weeks early. But it looks like a good, healthy baby. So uh, we're thankful for that. Well, let's get into the book. We're going to be in uh, Revelation 20 and, uh, and, and, and elsewhere. And tonight we're going to look at the Millennial Kingdom government. And as we continue in our studies, uh, you'll just continue, if you pay attention, take note, and re have some recall. You're going to you're learning a lot about your future home. Good to have Brother Eric with us. And, and Brother... Uh, before we get into our study, just take a couple minutes, if you would, and share the, a word of testimony, what you were talking to me about before. Yeah, so Eric, Eric has a word of testimony he's going to share with us. Um, a while back, I think it was uh, December, October, we, we were, you guys and, and uh, BBF uh, or I were praying for my dad to get saved. And he, He's a uh, Harley Davidson uh, biker. He's got the head of our mustache. He's six foot three. He married my mom, who's, who's a Filipino. Um, uh, in, in the Philippines, I was born in Missouri. Well, I hadn't seen him for 37 years prior to the sec second time, which was this last December. Well, there was uh, a chance and opportunity for us to stay with him. And uh, my son had a bunch of cheap tracks, and, and he started laying them around his house you everywhere. You know, keep it, keep it more united, but apparently the word was in it because. Can you tell the story, please? My son, <laughs> uh, my son will supplement. Yeah. So, so uh, basically, it, my son planted seeds of the gospel, cheap tracks around the house. And, and so we were doing our thing, going about, we went to the Grand Canyon and all that. And, and so we came back and come find out my dad had read all those tracks. Hallelujah! <laughs> and, and so you know, it was the last Friday that we were there. I asked him, I said, hey, can I ask you a uh, personal spiritual question? He said, yes, please. And uh, I said, would you like to uh, get saved? Would you like to know Jesus Christ as your Savior? He said, I would, but I just can't do it. I said, why? I said, you said the last, last time when a friend of mine witnessed to, to you, and uh, and so I just can't. I said, well, I said, well, we're going to be leaving that Saturday, or I think it was. I said, would you like to tell your grandson, uh, the only heir, you know, the only other monitor, or family, uh, would you like to tell him that you got saved? He goes, you know what? I would. I like to tell him that. Mm -hmm. And then at, at that moment, my son came in, my wife, and, and I said, would you like to ask the Lord to save you? And he said, yeah, but I want Joshua there. Wow. So Joshua yeah. came to the table and we prayed. And I know it's not through prayer. I understand that. I honestly think you got to say before we yeah. pray. Sure. But uh, but at that moment, you can just tell it's evident. And then the, right after he got saved, about five minutes later, he got a call. And in that call, someone said, you know, hey, can we do this and this and that? He said, you know, I can't do that because I just have the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Yeah. Ain't that exciting? Yeah. Woo! little motivation there for maybe some of you. And uh, I always tell everybody, you talk about that, you know, so-called sinner's prayer. What's the best thing, what's the best thing to do after you, a guy gets, you know he's believed the gospel, first thing to do is talk to the one who saved him. Amen? And then, so uh, some guys get a little hung up on that uh, too much, then... Uh, we've talked about it before the one, two, three, pray after me thing is a little problem, but uh, we won't get into that before we get into our study. 
Praise God. Thanks for sharing that, brother. Love hearing stories about people getting saved. Amen. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to hear some from you all if, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity. Don't he- ever hesitate to give a testimony. So uh, pe- testimonies about salvation, nothing better. All right, we're going to get into the study of the Millennial Kingdom Government. And uh, it's a strange thing to hear that word, but uh, I want you, before we go in there, I thought about this. I want to uh, have you turn over to Isaiah in your Bible. Isaiah chapter 9. We hear this verse quoted at Christmas time. And um, I want to show you something that if you haven't paid attention, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Isaiah 9, 6. And when you read this, tell me how many of you heard this at Christmas time. Go ahead and read it with me. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now watch this. Look what the next verse says. Read it. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Folks, Jesus is going to sit on a real literal throne on the earth in Jerusalem and rule the world. What theologians and seminaries have done is to totally strip the Bible of its real meaning and to set people off into this spiritualized, mystical nonsense. And so when you talk, you read these passages about the Lord being on a throne and ruling, they always symbolize it and make it mean something other than what it says. We believe the Bible. Amen? Amen. Those first words of verse 7 are what we're going to talk about tonight. Of the increase of His God government and peace. There has never been a time yet in which Jesus Christ has ruled the, the world from a throne in Jerusalem. God is not a liar. What He said will come to pass. Amen. Amen. We, we call it the millennium and we're going to continue to look at life in the kingdom age. And uh, I got this little note from our previous study. We, most of the time we get these uploaded Thursday, uh, the day after we teach them. And it, it, a note said, I had no idea there was so much about the coming kingdom age from that last study we did. My response, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. And that's literally. I mean, the Bible says so much more than we've gotten into yet. And then we also know there's so much more that we're not even told. You're going to see a whole lot more when you get there. Amen? Amen. So our opening text, we want to look at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 7. You can turn there if you want in your Bibles. It's good. Uh, You turn in your Bible or take notes and mark these in your Bible when you study these later on. But uh, verse 7 says, read it with me, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So you want to understand two things here. Number one is that Satan is in prison during this thousand years. It's afterwards that he's loosed. So remember that as we study all this, this is a time when Satan is bound during this thousand year reign. And we've mentioned this before, but believe it or not, the insane seminarians and following the teaching of Origen and, and Augustine and some of these guys who spiritualized everything, they, they will teach you that right now, Satan is bound. Now for most people who've never heard that before, you're like, that can't be true. Who's that dumb? Right. <laughs> Who can look around at the world the way it is and say Satan is bound right now? He's not. Thank God. This is not the millennium. But there is coming a time during the kingdom age, Satan is bound. And that is 
the uh, a very important part of the kingdom government that's going to take place. And that's why his wickedness will increase from this point forward. You wonder why you're watching America go into the sewer pit. It's not all Obama's fault, folks. There's 65 million people who voted for him. Amen. And there's still close to that many who support his wicked agenda today. Yeah. It's the people of America. And Satan is moving these people because as we've been studying in Ephesians, that people who are unsaved are children of the devil. And they walk according to the course of this world. And Satan knows the time. He, now, don't, don't misunderstand me. I want you to understand. We, we were careful in our Sunday study of the, the message on the prince and the power of the air. Satan isn't omniscient. And you, I'll hear people say, well, Satan knows that Bible better than you do. I kind of disagree with that because Satan knows a lot about the Bible, but he doesn't have Holy Spirit understanding. Amen. Yeah. So he's like talking to a lot of the sodomites and atheists. They can quote the Bible to you all the time, but they don't understand it because it takes the understanding of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. These things, Paul says, are spiritually discerned. And so Satan in Revelation 12, 12, now this is after the rapture, but I believe it's true even now to an extent it says, uh, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. That will be us at that time. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Those, those are left behind. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You see, Satan, as time goes on, he knows enough about what's going on, he can see the handwriting on the wall. Just like there's a reason why Satan was moving to, to put things the way they were when Jesus came the first time. And when Jesus was born, he knew enough to move Herod, a child of the devil, to kill all the innocent babies in Bethlehem. You see? So Satan knows enough to be dangerous. I can tell you that. And right now he knows the time. His knowledge is fallible and flawed but he understands the times. You remember there's one time where the, the devils that Jesus was casting out, they said, have you come to torture us before the time? See, even the devils know when their time is up. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jesus, during the millennium, is on earth and ruling on a literal throne. That's when he is literally King Jesus. He came the first time as a suffering servant. The second time as a conquering king. God promised this to David back in 2 Samuel 7.16 and thine house. How many of you know that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh so He is God but He is also man. And when He came as God he came as man, and as man, he was the physical descendant of King David. Amen. And you have two genealogies. In Matthew 1 through 18, it's the genealogy of Joseph that comes through Solomon. But he wasn't the physical offspring of Joseph, he was the legal heir as being adopted by Joseph. So he couldn't just be Joseph. Uh, a son of David through Joseph, he had to also have the bloodline, which he got through his mother. And if you read Luke's genealogy closely, you'll see that it wasn't through Solomon. Because Solomon and his line became wicked. And Jehoiakim got so wicked that God took the Jeh off his name because that's the name for God. And so you look at Mary's genealogy that traces back to David, but it goes through David's other son, Nathan. See that? Because he is both the legal heir through Joseph and the physical descendant of David through Mary. 
And that's why you have those two different... And that's, what is the, that's why those genealogies are there, folks. Don't skip them. They're to confirm to you that Jesus is the legitimate fulfillment of this promise. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. That didn't happen with Solomon and Rehoboam and the rest. It's yet to happen. And that's what these guys who make the kingdom all a spiritual thing and spiritualize it, they make God out to be a liar. It's going to happen, people. God's Word will be fulfilled. And the Father promised the Son, and we read about this, we studied it in Psalm 2, verses 6 and 7, begin, Yet have I set my King upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. Now when God decrees something, it's going to happen. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my Son. You see, that's the Father, all caps, talking to the Son. Jesus. To, he says, This day have I begotten thee. He didn't create him. He was begotten. You understand the difference? This is prophetic and future. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen. Amen. 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 I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance Amen. <laughs> and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Amen. Hasn't happened yet, but it will. It's a real promise. Now I want to turn here in Luke chapter 1 and we'll see that this is confirmed by none other than Gabriel the angel. Luke chapter 1, beginning of verse 26. And in verse 26 it says, In the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Verse 27, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, and watch this, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, Blessed art thou among women. Verse 29, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Read verses 31 and 32 with me. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now that's just spiritualized. I mean, that's not real. I mean, it's not really going to happen, is it? Can you imagine? I mean, I can't even imagine reading that and not believing what it says. There's going to come a day with that little baby that Mary gave birth to, that grew up, that was sinless, that performed miracles, that made the blind to see and the lame to walk, that took upon Himself the sin of the world, that was nailed to the cross and shed His blood, crucified and paid for the sins of the whole world, was buried in a tomb, and on the third day by His own power and authority rose from the dead, conquering sin and death. He then, for 40 days, taught His followers things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And then He stood on the Mount of Olives where He's going to return and said, I am going to go away, but I'm going to come back. But before He did that, He said, well, Lord... Wilt thou at this time restore the throne unto Israel? And Jesus didn't look at them and say, Come on, it's not really literal. <laughs> he didn't do that. He just said, At the times, it's not for me to tell. See? 
the promise stands. And He ascended to heaven. Just like He said in John 14, I will come again. And He's going to come again. And He's going to rule. The Lord promised it. The Lord God shall give unto Him the throne of His father David. Read verse 33 now with me. And He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of His kingdom there shall be no end. That's not the church. That's the house of Jacob. He's going to rule on a throne in Jerusalem over the house of Jacob, all of Israel. By the way, if you want to see something, if you haven't seen it before, you need to see that map where what you see today called Israel is about a fourth or less of the land that eventually will belong to Israel and Jesus will rule as king of Israel while also king of kings. All the kings. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me run. Now look what we just read. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Think of being David. I mean, David's just a sinner. Saved, but he's a sinner. He's now in heaven and he's watching all this fulfilled... I guarantee you God never walked over and said, Hey Dave, by the way, I didn't really mean what I... You know, there's promises about a throne and all that. <laughs> I hope you can understand. It's just not... Uh... Did you... God isn't going to do that to David. No. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. And it's fulfilled. And we read in Revelation 11:15 as the announcement was made that the end was coming... And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms, watch that, the kingdoms, plural S, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. They actually will tell you that's just talking about the church. Nonsense. He's going to be king of kings because He's going to rule over all the kingdoms of the earth. And we've already seen that the twelve apostles will represent Christ ruling over the twelve tribes. Church age and tribulation saints will represent Christ ruling over the Gentiles. That's how the government's going to break down. In Luke 22.30... Jesus talked about what we could call apostolic kingdom rule. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That's real. That's literal. What we call apostolic kingdom rule. The apostles will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Why? Because they're Jews. The church rules. Revelation 5.10 and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Coming soon. During the kingdom age, Jesus will rule over a representative government. Did you ever think about that? This is what Isaiah 32 1 says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, that's about the Messiah, and princes shall rule in judgment. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.